Welcome to Shift into Safety. A little BG on what we're going to be talking about today. PC stands for Personal Conveyance. My name is Jules Miller. Uh, some people call me Cool Jules. They said that once. Uh, some ops people even. Some ops, one ops person said that. Um, Anyways, uh, I love hours of service. To say that a little bit differently, I love hours of service. And that one's got a little bit more fun to it, right? Um, so today, uh, we are here to talk about some personal conveyance confusion. And how are we gonna clear that up? Well, we're gonna go through this regs book, start to finish, one line at a time, every hours of service regulation in this book, and we are going to dig out the roots of your confusion. Now some of you are looking at me thinking, what happened to that lady we just called cool two seconds ago? She's right here. How about this instead? How about we fire up some scenarios on the green screen and we chillax? How's that sound? Let's do it. Welcome everybody. Before we get started with the fun stuff, let's talk about how PC is defined. FMCSA defines PC as motion of a commercial motor vehicle while off-duty for personal use only. So if you're doing it for work, if you're moving your vehicle for a work duty, that is not personal conveyance. Also, if you're moving a vehicle to improve your operational readiness, or in other words, to get yourself in a better position for your next period of work, that's also not personal conveyance. So now let's get into a couple of scenarios of the things that are personal conveyance and aren't personal conveyance. And to do that, we're gonna do it with a fun little game called The PC is Right. All right, so for this first scenario, I'm gonna give you two options, and you're gonna pick which one qualifies as personal conveyance. So let's assume you're bobtail, you're not currently under dispatch, and you're parked at a truck stop or a parking location, right? Option number one, you're gonna go get tacos, right? Option number two, you're gonna go get a trailer. Which one qualifies as personal conveyance? Did you say going to get a trailer? Well, the price is wrong, Bob. The correct answer is going to get tacos. If you're going to pick up a trailer, search for an empty trailer for any reason, that gets you ready for your next work. Even if you're not under dispatch, it doesn't matter. It doesn't qualify as personal conveyance. Tacos, on the other hand, FMCSA says if you're going from a place of temporary lodging, like a hotel or a truck stop, you can go to a nearby restaurant under personal conveyance if you need to get food. Careful though, just make sure it's a nearby restaurant because remember, company policy says we're limited to 25 miles a day for personal conveyance. And if you're going to get tacos, watch out for the tortilla. <laughs> for this next scenario, imagine you are at a receiver and they've taken forever to unload you. Now you're going to be a couple minutes short on your clock and that receiver walks up to you and says, you can't stay on their property. That never happens, I know, right? But let's just imagine, okay? Um, your two options here in this scenario, let's say you can go 10 miles east to the nearest truck stop, or you can go 15 miles west to your next pickup, where you know they'll let you stay there on site, and then you can pick up your next load first thing in the morning when you get available hours. Which one's personal conveyance? The correct answer is 10 miles east to the nearest truck stop. You have to go to the nearest safe haven if you're going to use personal conveyance, you can't go to your next pickup, you can't improve your operational readiness, remember, so make sure you're going to that nearest truck stop. For this last scenario, let's imagine you're parked somewhere for your 10 hour break, or even your 34 hour reset, right? Two things could happen here. One, imagine that you've just remembered you need to get repairs done on your truck. The shop's pretty close by, and if you go now, they can have your truck repaired in time for when you're done with your 34 hour reset, okay? On the other hand, Let's say the police knock on your truck door and they say, hey, you can't park here. You need to move your truck down the street. Which one of these options is personal conveyance? Only if an officer asks you to move. If you have to get repairs done on your truck, it doesn't matter if you're on your 34-hour reset, you're not under dispatch, your bobtail, any of those things. You're going to get work done for the benefit of Swift, for the benefit of your motor carrier. So that is work, which is not personal conveyance. Let's end off here now with four pro tips that every pro should know. Number one, personal conveyance is not an editable duty status. So make sure that you declare your intent to use personal conveyance before you start driving and then make sure you switch yourself back to off duty when you're done. Make sure you don't get stuck on that driveline. 
Number two, when you use personal conveyance, make sure you put a good note in there about what it's for. Did you go get groceries? Did you go get tacos? Did you need to find a safe haven to rest? Make sure you put a good note in there. Number three, don't use personal conveyance if you don't have to. It's as simple as that. If you have time on your driveline, just use your driveline. That gives you one less thing for DOT officers to ask you about in a roadside inspection. It's just time that you don't need to spend, right? And number four, probably the most important one, we want you to be well rested and alert when you're behind the wheel. So if you're gonna use personal conveyance, just make sure you still have a good chunk of rest before you use personal conveyance or after personal conveyance before you get back to your work day. Thanks for joining us on the PC is Right on Shift into Safety. Remember, don't be a workaholic. Personal conveyance is for you time.